morning, good morning everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. We are live here in Northern Idaho and it is an odd day. I'm wondering how many of you will agree with me. Uh, we had, good morning Miss Shelley. We had heavy winds set in last night and uh, heard several trees go down right off the bat and the mountain boy is out in his camper next to our solar panels and there are some dead trees in that vicinity and so we, we called him in and suggested that he and his dog get in here rather quickly and uh, as a result of that he misplaced his glasses so this morning was spent trying to find this kid's glasses and what's so crazy is he lives in a camper. It's the kind of camper that goes on the back of your pickup truck. So it is not large and it does not have a lot of space to misplace a pair of glasses. So we didn't know if maybe in his hustle to get out of the camper and get into the house last night with the heavy winds that maybe, you know, he kicked them out of the camper or whatever. So spent the morning trying to find glasses, which did not happen. We did not locate them yet. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, Diana. So, how many of you can agree? Good morning, Miss Janet. How many of you guys can put your hands up and say, you know, life gets disheveled at times. Things throw us off kilter. We experience a lot of stress as a result at times. Ah, or afternoon. Yeah, I guess it is afternoon for you East Coasters, so. <laughs> But my morning has seemed very disheveled. I had such great intentions this morning. How many of you also end up with great intentions? And through those great intentions, things just don't happen, right? I was supposed to go out with my basket this morning. I was so excited. Um, Miss Angie from Silent Tree Naturals, she sent me stuff a while back. I did a video on that. <laughs> Tammy says constantly, Diana says amen to that, yes. So we're gonna talk about that because when we get stressed, we get disheveled, we get off kilter, sometimes it can be extremely hard to get back on track. Yes, amen, right? Um, Angie needed some St. John's wort. It is a nauseous weed out here. It is all over the place. Shelly says happens often. Yes, I know I'm not alone. I so know I'm not alone. And it can take such great effort to totally get yourself back on track. Well, Angie does not have St. John's wort growing like it does here. I mean, I walk out and I am like totally surrounded by it which is a good reason why when I'm outside I feel so good because St. John's wort is one of those herbs that helps you to, uh, it changes your mood. Um, I, love, I love going out, I love foraging things. So today on my trek I was supposed to pick raspberries and get raspberry leaf for my raspberry leaf tea. I was gonna dry some, but I was gonna pick Angie a whole bunch of St. John's wort and myself to make um, tincture and oil from the flowers and I was going to pick yarrow and I was going to get Angie some pine tree sap which again I am surrounded by tall timber and it is just in abundance so I was going to get her some of that as well well instead I spent my morning looking for glasses I was also extremely tired when I woke up this morning because um, for a change we had extremely hot weather last night and I was I felt like I was like melting during the night. We do have air conditioners. We certainly can't run them during the night. Um, we've been very fortunate that our weather has been cooler. Yesterday, however, was 110 on our porch. So it was about 101. And these guys have been working out in it. So, you know, that does make you tired. Diana, I know she's going to go, uh-huh, yeah. She's been experiencing some really hot, dry, humid weather also. I'm gonna quickly share this. I always forget to do that. Let me real quick share this with a couple people and get them on with us. But so you guys are agreeing with me. This is something that happens often to others. It's not just me uh, meandering around trying to keep my bearings. I am not alone in this and that's always a nice thing to know that you're not alone in the chaos of the world. Let me see here. Diana says that would be great. I don't know if it's 
prevalent in my area. Uh, St. John's wort is just, we have a lot of nauseous weeds. It was really funny when we got here. There was a bunch of things that I actually picked from the wild and made sure I had in my yard in, in like little beds and come to find out that they are nauseous weeds and we're supposed to be spraying them. But they're very useful. Uh, good morning, Miss Jane. Oh, good to see you joining me. Uh, there are so many great things in the wild and I have, I know this is probably gonna be backwards. I need to get myself a mirror so that when I show you things, it's not backwards. But I shared this the other week. Um, edibles and medicinal plants are surrounding us, all of us in different places and different types. Good morning, Chad. So that was my, that was my thing for today. Angie inspired me to kick up my game because these are things I wanted to do. So now I have to because I told her I was going to forage her some, so I was excited about that. But needless to say, I did not make it out. Today is supposed to be in the 70s, 110 to 70s, go figure. But I will take it. I don't mind the heat as bad as the guys do. Um, they came in and they were both pretty dizzy yesterday. It was hot and they're doing some, um, they're, they're working on a porch roof and working outside so it just gets if you guys work outside I know Chad does you know working outside in the heat can be really draining uh, and then again sleeping in it so you wake up you're tired and uh, it, it's just crazy things things affect our days things can put us in stubers other people can affect our days and and um, the thing is there's a lot of different stressors in our world and oftentimes we are the guilty party for allowing it to be a stress. There are so many things that we choose to stress over that we cannot control. Yes, I know you are all out there shaking your heads. I don't stress over those things anymore. I finally just relinquish those things. I can't change them. In my circumstances right now, there is so much that I cannot control, I cannot change, I cannot alter, so why should I waste my physical energy and my mental energy and even your spiritual energy trying to change things that we can't control, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about some of the stressors and some of the ways that we can choose to alter them. You guys hear me say all the time, I could not imagine going through my experiences. Hey, good morning, Deb. I, I could not imagine going through my experiences without God by my side. God holds my right hand, and I admit frequently that God carries me. Uh, you know, there are times when we just go through spots in our lives that we can't control things. We are affected by them, but we can't control them. And, you know, sometimes, like with my health, I was flat on my back and dependent on God. And He carried me. He taught me. He, he worked in me. Uh, my relationship got so much stronger. So, one of the key things, which we will also talk about, is having that relationship with God. And, you know, if you don't have that, you choose not to have that, that is okay. The information I'm going to share with you today is still pertinent. I'd like to see you lean that direction because I'll tell you what, guys, there is so much strength in that. So, so much strength in having a relationship with Jesus and knowing that there are things we cannot control, but we can give those things to Him and lighten our load where most of us try to hang on to those things or we give them and take them back often. By relinquishing those weights to God, we are free to get out of our disheveled state rather than carrying those weights. I'm gonna share some books, by the way. I did not get a chance to put them all together this morning um, in my own disheveled state, but I'm going to share some books in the descriptions and in the comments below. But many of you have already shared how, um, you know, life can turn upside down, how we get disheveled, how, how we stress over things. So I'm going to ask you, what are some ways that you um, have found or things that you utilize to get past those stresses, to get yourself into a different place? 
I mentioned, you know, St. John's Wort. St. John's Wort is a great mood changer. So is music. Um, there are other herbs. There are teas. I am drinking a really fabulous, um, I don't typically like Earl Grey tea, but I tried this tea because it has a lot of flowers in it. And it is just, it is now my favorite tea. I will share a link for that also. I am a tea connoisseur. I love making my own teas. Um, and there are things in life that can be calming, nurturing. Getting outside is one of my most favorite things to do. I think that's why I was so excited today about being out because I intended to do it for a good portion of my day. So guess what tomorrow is going to be? Yes. I am gonna do this. It's just sometimes things happen and we gotta learn to roll with it, which you've heard me talk about a lot. We roll a lot. It's surprising that we don't have like calloused backs and such from just continuously rolling through what life gives us. We all have that. We all experience ups and downs. We all experience um, health issues, struggles of all sorts, marriage, money, Okay, Shelly says, I like to lose myself in a good book. Oh, yes, I will relate to that, especially recently. Um, Tammy says, I relax by hanging clothes on the clothesline. I know, isn't that funny? Most people would find that work, but I do find that relaxing also, as long as I don't lose eyeballs to the hummingbirds, which you experienced last week with me. And she says, Earl Grey is awesome. It's funny, it was just one of those tastes that I did not, I did not care for. Same with really strong... Uh, spicy teas. There's a bangle, I think it's bangle spice um, by Celestial Seasons. I could not, I just, there's certain things. So we find what works really good for us. I love a good chamomile tea. I have a really great chamomile and flower tea also. Lavender teas are really good. Do you have a list of your tea recipes for us to use? I don't have one put together in a blog post, but I will make a list, a note to myself to do that. I am going to be sharing our bread recipe today, later today, um, but I will put something together because, oh man, and the other thing is having those, um, you guys have seen my herbal pantry. My herbal pantry is loaded with all kinds of different herbs, so what's nice is you can take those teas and you can throw them together and mix them together and mix and match. Um, also gaining a lot of healthy benefits from them. Yesterday I had raspberry leaf tea, sage tea, and nettle. I was going to add uh, Don Koi in that also, but I didn't have that in a loose, in, in, a, in an herbal form, so I took a capsule of that. Bergamot is not for everyone. Yes, Chelsea, thank you for sharing that. It can be stronger. And good to have you joining me. Helen, nice to have you joining me also. Nicole is joining. I sometimes relax by listening to you for years. Ah, cool. I'm glad to know that. Thank you. I'm glad I, I give God the glory on that because what I share with you guys is not me. Uh, he blesses me every week with that, but I'm really glad to know that. Thank you for sharing and glad to have all you guys joining me today. This is awesome. So let's talk about this. We're going to talk about overcoming stress and what some of them are. I also want to share with you that this comes from the Word for You Today devotional and app. I get the devotional, the print devotional from my church. They do a three month at a time devotional um, and it's fabulous. I am finding with the summer months, I'm doing my devotions all over the place. That includes outside. So what I've been doing is using the app and the app is free and um, is a great tool and a great resource. <laughs> Got a pause for tea. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, okay, I thought somebody else messaged. All right, so overcoming stress. The one, the first one says, and uses an example of John 8, 25. Who are you, they demanded. Jesus replied, the one I have always claimed to be. All right. Jesus was constantly under pressure. There were grueling demands on his time. He rarely had personal privacy and he was constantly interrupted. How many of you mothers feel the same way? <laughs> so we, we, we experience the same things. People repeatedly misunderstood. 
criticized and ridiculed him. He was under enormous stress, yet he remained at peace under pressure. How did he do it? He based his life on eight sound principles of stress, stress management. So for the duration of this, we're going to talk about those eight things. One of them is knowing who you are and being okay with that. How many of you are comfortable in your own skin? We talked about this last week and in different sessions. How many of you are comfortable for being who you are? And I ask you this, for those of you that joined me last week, how many of you after the session went into the bathroom or in a room in your home or if you were by yourself, turned your favorite song on and danced like a fool? I did and I've done it a couple times this week and I'm gonna keep doing it. There is something about just letting loose and just being who we are and not being afraid to um, express who we are, not being worried what other people think. There is such a liberating feeling in life and a freedom when you hit that point. And you know, I, I'm speaking to you younger folks out there. Uh, it takes a while in life till you mature to that point. So I'm gonna try to nurture you guys to get there before your mid 30s and your mid 40s because that's typically where it happens, where you finally get to a point where you don't care what anybody thinks, you're just happy being you and you find such a great joy and happiness in being in that place. So I'm gonna nurture you guys because you need to be okay with who you are. You need to live life like there's no tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised and you need to Dance like there's nobody watching you. Sing like there's nobody listening. And just love who you are. That is not being prideful unless you take it too far. It is just being comfortable with who God created you to be. And there's a priceless place in being there. All right, so Jesus replied, the one I have always claimed to be, that is who he is. And if you don't know who you are, others might try to tell you who they think you are or who you should be. How many of you have experienced that? You're not good enough unless you are what I want you to be. Those aren't valuable people in your life. They can be either toned down, um, blocked out, or removed. Simple as that. You are allowed to be who you are. You are allowed to be what you dream to be. And you are allowed to be who God created you to be. So a lot of stress comes from our hiding behind masks, living double lives, being unreal with others, and trying to be somebody we're not. Insecurity always produces pressure in our lives when we're insecure and we feel coerced into performing and conforming, right? We do not, what did I talk about last week too? About not being part of society's mold. We don't have to be part of what everybody else is doing. That's the beauty of being who we are. And there is such confinement in that box and in that place, okay? And that is why we live the way we are. People don't understand it. People will never, many will never get us, and that's okay. The thing is, we are gaining great happiness in that, and as we are progressing to this place of peace and comfort, we are seeing that even more. And moving forward from this place, there is no way we could go backwards from where we are now. It's just deeper into where, what we have chosen to be our lifestyle. Shelly says, I have experienced that. And Chelsea says, oh my goodness, so much truth. I love it. I needed this truth, so I thank you. God knew you needed it, and he's just sharing it through me, sister. All right, so you must know who you are and whose you are. You are a redeemed child of God put on this earth, not by accident, but for a purpose. You are deeply loved and fully accepted, and he has a plan for your life. Therefore, you are significant. To overcome the stress, you must know who you are. Until you deal decisively with this issue, you'll be plagued by it. Good morning, Miss Courtney. So, learn to be comfortable with who you are. Part of that is learning to listen to what you speak to yourself. I say that a lot. The mountain man has been, I've been correcting him lately because he's been making statements out loud. And I said, those are statements you're also making in your head. I know it. You've got to turn it around. 
You know, we're all, we're all guilty of this. I'm speaking truths that I've lived through, that I've walked through, that I have learned. And like I said, I'm going to nurture you younger folks. And if, if there are people that are my age or older and you haven't reached the spot, I am going to nurture you too because we need to get to this place of loving ourselves, loving ourselves, knowing who we are and being confident in that. In that. that doesn't mean being cocky and, and prideful and arrogant. That means just feeling good about yourself. And, and, you know, be cautious of those other three things because you could take it to a, a, a too far in that level. So there is a fine line and you don't want to be cocky and arrogant and, and those things. You want to just be in love with Jesus so much that you love yourself because you know that he has purpose in you. And you know what? Sometimes that can be the, o the only thing we can hold tight to because we're surrounded by people that don't appreciate who we are. And again, like I said, those people can be, um, you can learn to put uh, muffs on your ears around those people, take it with a grain of salt when they have something negative to say, or disengage. Um, the other thing is, overcoming stress, is John 5.30, I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. Not only um, know who you are, but knowing who you are trying to please. It's all about asking God to check your heart. It is exactly, that is the greatest thing we can focus on is our hearts. Because if we have negative emotions or we are feeling jealous of somebody or we are insecure, those are all things that come back to a heart issue. And, and he puts us in those places so that we can reevaluate ourselves and try to... Um, Bear with me a second. Needed to block somebody there. Um, we, I lost my train of thought, but we need to really focus on our hearts when God puts us in places that are tough, um, that invoke emotion, uh, that we're sensitive to it, that we're angry with it. When we hit those parts, as Chelsea said, it's God checking on our hearts. So that is one of the first places we always need to look. And as we progress through these things, we change our hearts and we direct ourselves and we learn to uh, take greater trust in Him, focus on Him more. And in doing so, these things that we're dealing with, such as um, insecurities in ourselves or knowing who we're pleasing um, and anything else we're gonna cover today, you know, he, he is where we need to be looking for our strength. So knowing who we're pleasing, you know, as we go through life, a lot of times we are trying to please our parents, we are trying to please teachers, we are trying to please um, uh, other students, other friends, other, you know, as you're going through school, and I, don't even, I couldn't even imagine doing that today with everything that is out there today, but we need to focus on who we're supposed to be pleasing if we're focusing on pleasing God and only God, our, our hearts are in the right place, our focus is right, we are being guided by the Holy Spirit, and we're not, again, worrying about other people and pleasing other people. When we finally stop trying to please other people, there is a great freedom in that too, and we learn to be more confident in ourselves. We don't have to please anybody, and we don't have to go to great lengths to be noticed or to fit in, because we don't have to fit in. It's, a, it's like a smoke and mirrors kind of thing that we've grown up as a society, in society, and of the world, feeling like we need to be a part of everything. We talked about this a little bit last week, and I remember Shelly ch uh, chiming in and saying, too, that you know, she experienced that, where I didn't, I didn't worry about fitting into that click, even though you know, often they make you feel like you know, you're not worthy. But again, who are we pleasing and who, why does it matter? But I, I tended to get along with all the different groups, the techies, the, the um, academics, the, you know, the, all those different cliques. I got along with all of them. I didn't try to fit into any of them. I just, I just got along with everybody. And I think when you focus on that or when, when you are able to do that, the, the need to fit in kind of goes away. I just, I've always felt different. I don't fit into 
the scheme of society. And we talked about this last week. I feel like I was born 100 years too late. I know that Shelly and Tammy also feel the same way. We've talked about that. You know, if you can eliminate trying to fit in and just focusing on pleasing God and doing the right things, you know, we're all going to sin. We're all going to fall short. We all do it probably on a regular basis. But when we are constantly thankful and ask for forgiveness and focus on pleasing Him more than anything else, that need to please other people goes away. And it's a beautiful thing. Jesus didn't try to please everybody, so isn't it foolish for you to try to do something even God doesn't do? When you lose sight of who you're trying to please, you'll always cave into three things. Criticism because you're overly concerned about what others think of you. Two, competition, because you're afraid somebody will get ahead of you. And three, conflict, because you're threatened by anyone who disagrees with you. By focusing on God's will, you simplify your life. You'll always be doing the right thing, the thing that pleases Him, regardless of what anybody else thinks. We love to blame stress on other people and our, on our obligations. You made me do it. I have to do it. I've got to. Actually, there are a few things in life apart from our jobs that we must do. So what are we really saying? I choose to blank because I don't want to handle the consequences. Rarely does anybody make us do anything. So we can't blame other people for our stress, but we allow them to stress us. So we got to learn to draw that line. When we feel pressured, we're choosing to let others put us there. The fact is, we're not victims unless we allow ourselves to be pressured by outside demands. And, you know, as far as criticisms go, you know, not always getting, uh, you know, um, the conflict where uh, people disagree with us. You know what? We're going to have that all the time. And the same with competition. You know, I feel there's good friendly competition. You know, we play board games, we play games, we we target shoot. You know, we have fun. And and those are good competitive things that kind of up our game. But when you get competitive to the point that you're worried about someone else getting you know, doing better than you or being better than you or being noticed more. Those are foolish things. Like I said, I think it was last week that I said it. You know, I get excited when people I am working with excel and do better. And I like to bring people up the ladder with me because, you know, it's a lonely place to travel when you're going in these places by yourselves. And it's so much more fun when you can do it with somebody. And have a good time doing it and and you know what if you learn to celebrate other people's successes you don't get in that competitive mode I just am happy for people when they when they are meeting their dreams when they're reaching their goals those are good things and if we learn to be happy for them and genuinely happy for them it's a good thing it's a good feeling and that's a heart thing too so think about that and, and don't worry about what other people think. You know what, there's wacky people out there that have weird motivations and, and their hearts are cold. And when you realize that, I feel more sorry for them because they're missing out on the awesome beauties that I'm experiencing in life. So you know what, I'm not hurt by them, I feel bad for them. All right, you guys have got some good comments going on here. Chelsea says, amen, God is the bedrock, he is the consistent, the constant. He checks us constantly, so we got to listen to that checking for sure. And that's how we grow. That's how we improve. That's how we get past this stuff. He knows. We just got to learn to listen. Courtney says, we'll listen when I get back from checking on some dogs I'm watching. No worries, girlfriend. Come on back. Good afternoon or morning, Charles. I am doing great today. I hope you're doing well also. We are talking about things that stress us, Charles. So right now, um, Overcoming stress, number third, the third thing. The verse is John 8, 14. I know where I come from and where I am going. Know what you want to accomplish. Jesus said, I know where I came from and I know where I'm going. Can you say that? So many of us, like last week's conversation, we are stuck in that mold of society. We are living in abundance. We are living in clutter. We are unable to make healthy decisions. We are afraid to make decisions because what we want is not what society dictates. So what we need to learn to do is know what we want 
and where we are going to get that. And also making sure that we are in line with God and his desires. And that's something that we need to be prayerful about. But that's part of our struggle is that we have these great dreams and desires, but people tell us that they're unattainable and that they're not part of this world and that that's nuts and that's crazy and we shouldn't be doing that. But the thing is, if we know in our hearts what we want and there are desires and we feel disappointed and like we're missing out on something because of that, then we're not seeking what we want. We're seeking what the world wants for us. So this is something that's important to know. And guys, getting out a piece of paper today and writing these things down. What are things that hold us up? What are things that we allow to stress us? And where do we want to go? What are the things we want to accomplish in life? Unless you plan your life and establish priorities, you'll be pressured by other people to do what they think is important. Every day you either live by priorities or you live by pressures. There's no other option. And when we make a list of priorities and what's important to us and we focus on that, instead of allowing other people to tell us what we should be doing, if I did that, guys, <laughs> I don't know where I would be today. You know, right out of high school, I got a programming job, salaried at a fabulous salary for an 18 year old. I mean, it was a true blessing. And you know what? It was a successful job, it had a future. It led me to being a web designer, a programmer independently. It l allowed me to live this lifestyle. It was a God thing for sure, all the way back when, when I didn't even have a computer and God led me to this occupation. The first words out of my mother's mouth were, what in the world would you want a job like that for? You should be um, doing something different. And you know, Thank the Lord that the Holy Spirit was strong in me, even though I wasn't as a as devoted and in communication with him then as I am now. But he guided me and and I learned not to care what other people thought. It hurt. Yes, that hurt. Because this that was like one huge stepping stone for me. But that was also coming from a person who was jealous, possibly or had ideas of their own and ideals of their own as to what they wanted me to do and didn't care about my own dreams, you know? So these are, these are small people that wanna bring you down and you gotta realize what voice is stronger and what voice matters more and that should be the voice of God leading you. So knowing where you wanna go is important. Busyness is not necessarily productive either. You know, we may be spinning in circles but not accomplishing anything of real value. Preparation causes you to be at ease. So what this is saying is to have a plan and have an idea of what you wanna do and how you're going to accomplish that. Having clear defined goals simplifies life. So spend a few minutes at the beginning of every day talking with God in prayer. Then look at your schedule for the day and decide, is this really what I want to spend my life doing and what I want to do for my day? Am I willing to exchange the next 24 valuable hours for these activities? The right answer to those two questions will lower your stress level by helping you to prioritize. This is something that I've been talking with you about all year long. We need to have a plan, we need to have a schedule, we need to um, have priorities, and we need to learn how to do that. And for many, because of abundance and clutter and the inability to be organized, because of those things, we lack direction. And by lacking direction, we are spinning in circles. And you will continue to spin in circles until you learn to just stop and focus and pray about it. Let me see what Chelsea has said here. The see more button hopefully will work today. Let's see. Ah, come on. <laughs> it's fighting. Let me see if I can go to here and see the comments. Okay. 
Okay, let me see. Nope, the comments are not showing all the way. It's very lagging. Okay, so anyway, I will continue on. Let me read what she says and let's see if that see more button. Aha! I think it, nope, it didn't. As I, <laughs> all right. Anyway, she says, Chelsea says it's so difficult to deal with a parent's disappointment, but it's what God wants, not what others want, or even what we want. Exactly, exactly. I'm not sure if you said more there, the, the see more button is not cooperating with me, but that's the thing. You know, we, we take such great value in hearing words from people and, and need to realize the blessings we are being given and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us in these circumstances and and to know and trust in our dreams and our desires you know if they are wholesome and they are God-given we are being directed into our past and we got to trust in that greatly she says oh Lordy I am a misprepared but God has been showing me it's not about what my plans are for me it's what he has planned amen you know what I sit down at the end of every day and I go over my list that I accomplished for the day making sure I marked everything off um, and then I reorganize my day for the next day but like this morning when things got all disheveled you know that may change and I sit down and I pray about my list I look over my list um, sometimes how we feel uh, Sometimes things are gifted to us. So we've got to be willing to accept those things and roll with those things and trust in those things that they are divinely planted for us and not stress over it. You know, I was always a preparer. I am a preparer, but I have learned that my day is dictated by him. And when those things change, that's what I'm supposed to be doing and there's purpose in it, there's reason for it, there's growth in it, there's something to be learned in it. There's a lot that could come of it, right? And I know that that's exactly what Chelsea is saying. Um, Shelly says to Chelsea, I know I'm not sure my mom will ever be proud of me. And you know what guys? Doesn't matter. Mine won't either. Mine won't either. Mine doesn't even have nice things to say about me. But you know what? I know that I am loved. I know that Papa loves me dearly and his love is so much greater than anything they could ever offer me and I'm no longer disappointed in that. I pray for her. I pray for her daily. Um, I know that there are things in her life that have held her where she is, um, keeping her from enjoying the best parts of life. So we need to understand that the things I'm telling you to do and to, to look past and to get over um, are people like this in a lot of cases. We all have them. Whether it's the people directly around us, whether it's coworkers, whether it's friends, um, people all have a story. And those stories make people up. And if they are not progressing in their life and learning how to handle the things from their past, like we talked about last week, they're not progressing into their future. They are stuck in a place of bitterness, angry, um, jealous. And you know what? I do feel bad for people like that because they are missing out on the best parts of life. Because of what their place, they are missing out on good friends. They are missing out on relationships. They are missing out on love. You know, they, they project what they, what they are and they seek, and, and that's what they are gaining, is more bitterness and ugliness. So what we need to do is disengage from those people. Don't allow their sentiments to actually affect us. Those thoughts just bounce off of me anymore. I find humor in it, in, in that, you know, they, they are stooping to that level to try to derail me. And I just, I just pray for them. I pray for them. And I do honestly go unaffected by them. And I encourage you to do the same because you are beautifully and wonderfully made. And just because people can't see that, does not stop you from being who you are. There are going to be so many people in the world 
that have negative things to say to us that don't get us, that don't understand. But that doesn't matter. What matters is our relationship with Christ, our relationship with ourselves, and, and being willing to look past those things and not allow it to stress us. Taking them with a grain of salt and knowing that we have a lot to offer despite somebody's neglect in being able to see that. Shelly says, I have been trying to let what she says go so that they do not affect me. It is a process. It is such a process, especially when there are people that we, you know, in some cases may not be able to walk away from, um, or we're not ready to choose to walk away from them, or they surround us like at work, our coworkers. You know, you can't change our coworkers necessarily and their intentions, but we can, you know what, the more we kill people with kindness and love on them and not react to them, the more we can possibly be that seed planted to make a difference in their lives. And, you know, that's what I am going to choose to be. I choose to be okay with who I am. And because I choose to be okay with who I am, and I dance like there's nobody watching and sing like there's nobody listening, those things kind of deflect. If, you know, if you learn that, that's part of our armor. In Ephesians 6, that is part of our armor to be able to let those things deflect from us and not affect who we are and what we're meant to be. Good morning, Craig. Good to have you joining me. And we're going to work on that. And you know what? Learning to love them despite their ignorance is also a growth tool that allows us to just get past that. There was a point where if I saw my parents' photos, it just, it, it hurt and it was hard to see. And now I see that and I, it just makes me smile. You know, there were, there were things that I can remember that were good or I can choose to put myself in a different place, but I can smile at those pictures. You know, we can't always, um, we, we can't choose where we came from, but we can certainly choose where we're going, can't we? So we all have those hurts that we've got to get past. And if you guys missed last week's, definitely go back and listen to that because our past plays such a huge role in our today and our future. We need to get past our past. And that's what we talked about last week. So definitely go back there and listen to that because it is a process. Through retraining my brain, I had to catch myself doing certain things or thinking certain things. And as we become more aware of how we feel when things are spoken to us and how we react to those things, that's what we can change. So when those things are spoken, if you learn to laugh about it, because it's somebody else's silliness really. And I told you guys, I laugh at inappropriate times and that's probably one of them, but it is certainly a good defense mechanism because that's somebody's foolishness and silliness and not seeing you know, the goodness in my abilities or my accomplishments and being proud of those things with me. You know, it would be the same if I was that way with other people that I didn't honor where, where God just put them. Um, I heard it said this past week that when we, and I think I might have read it last week. When we are not happy with somebody else's God-given accomplishments, you know, it would be like stealing it away from them. And, and do you really want to do that? We need to learn how to cope with the things that we are stuck on. And if you are stuck on, on dealing with the things other people say, learn to find humor in it. When they can't find or see the goodness in those great things, to me that's funny. How could you miss that? How could you, why would you choose to? And then you pray for him. It's all you can do. God is near the humble and those who seek him. Yep, exactly. And, and we need to seek him. I can't express enough that getting past all these things in our lives, the stress, the dishevelment, is seeking him. When I was disheveled this morning, guess what I went to? I went to my Bible. You know, sometimes in those states of dishevelment, you know, I was all geared to go, and then I was searching for the, the glasses, and then suddenly I had to try to get myself back on track, and trying to get myself back on track seemed a little more tricky than normal. So, you know, leaning on him for the answers is the key thing, always. All right, number four, 
Luke 4, 43, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns also because that is why I was sent. Okay, focusing on one thing at a time, being overwhelmed by abundance, the abundance of our to-do list, the abundance of what we're working on, the clutter around us. So many of us are unable to focus on one thing at a time. Mountain Man struggles with, with that, with our home. When we were doing all this stuff, there was so much to do. What do you do? What do you work on? I'm working on this, but I should be working on that. Okay, focus on the most important thing you need to accomplish. Finish that or get it to a point where you can't go anymore and then move on to the next thing. That is so important. You know, I, I used to be this multitasking queen, I felt. I was the superwoman multitasker, and I was so proud of that. And you know what? That was an awful thing to be proud of because you know what? Like it said earlier, I was spinning in my tracks. I didn't accomplish anything. I multitasked through a million things and never finished one task. How many of you do that? I did, I don't anymore, and I can multitask now like a champion, but I multitask it like I just expressed. You get something finished or to the point where you can no longer go on it, and then you move on to the next thing. Sometimes I do need to have multiple things going. I'll have a load of wash going while I'm washing dishes. I might have websites uploading while I'm working on a video. But it's, it's you gotta be able to see the point where what you're multitasking on that if they're simultaneously doing their own thing and you're okay, great. But if you're multitasking to a point that you're not accomplishing anything, you're not doing nothing. You're just spinning. You're in the wheel. You're the mouse in the wheel. So knowing to focus on one thing at a time is really important. That Seymour button drives me crazy. I'm gonna do my best here. Ah, it's fighting. All right, Chelsea says, with lots of laughter and tears. Focusing on one thing at a time is my downfall. It's almost a pitfall to me and I need to work on multitasking. What you need to, guys, you need to learn to do is not multitask. Create a list. Make your list of importance so that the most important thing is at the top. Focus on it, do it, get to it, and then go to the next thing. And I know you said more there, so I'm sorry if I'm not touching on it, but when I do comment later, I'll look at those and if I, there's more to it, and I apologize. The stupid see more little button. It's a little little blue link, and if you don't hit it just right, it won't, it won't open it up. I am going through my house, Shelly says, and getting rid of things. I have one table that I put the stuff to sort through, so it is, let's see. <laughs> this thing is fighting with me. But in other words, what Shelly, I believe, is saying is that she's got it set up so that she can sort on one spot and probably make piles moving forward. You guys can see her comment. Being organized in your processes of doing things is really important to help you so that in that level of multitasking you are accomplishing things. This girl is becoming the declutter queen. I love it. And so is Tammy and Diana. David, hello David. David is from Africa, he is a dear friend, and he says, hello sister, I thank God I can't multitask. You know, it is a good thing too, right? I know there are a lot of men who cannot multitask. I think it's the women that got that arena knacked pretty good, but as you can see, it's not always a positive and productive thing. And it's a blessing for you, David, that you cannot multitask, that's good. That means you're very productive. Shelly says to Chelsea, I know there are more things to than hand when it comes to nursing. Okay, I missed some of that there. Probably the end of that see more that I could not hit. So there has got to be an easier way. Let me see. No. All right. Well, I am sorry, guys. I'm trying. Um, so on this one, it says focus on one thing at a time. Are you being pulled in different directions? People constantly try to do this to Jesus and distract him from his goal in life. The Bible says at daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving. Jesus was about to leave and tried to make him, they tried to make him stay. 
Here is how he responded. I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom to the other towns also because that is why I was sent. He refused to be distracted by less important matters. And indeed, he was a master of this. Everybody tried to interrupt him. Everyone had a plan B for his life. But in essence, he responded, no, I must keep moving toward my goal. And he kept right on doing what he knew God had told him to do. He was determined, he was persistent, and he was focused. So when you have a dozen different things to do, pick the most important one, stick with it until it is complete, then pick the second most important and do the same thing until you've completed the task. When we diffuse our efforts, we're ineffective. When we concentrate on our efforts, we're more successful. Diffused light produces a hazy glow, whereas light that's concentrated produces fire. Jesus didn't let interruptions prevent him from concentrating on his goal. He didn't let others make him tense or stressed or irritated. And he is your example. I can see you guys saying things here. We are sorting through things as well. Yes, I know. And, and you know what? It's a process. And Shelly shared something with me last week, a video. And I thought this was really great. This is the one thing I got from the video that stood out to me. And I do say it, but maybe I don't want you guys to ever feel like my ideas and my way of doing things is the way you have to do things. I've mentioned that trying 15 minutes on a task and, and working on that for decluttering um, is a great way to start. If you have more time, you can keep going and working at it. But when you set it like this enormous time frame and it gets overwhelming, you're likely to stop. But what I gained from that video was to not feel that what everybody says is what is going to work for you. So you've got to try through trial and error to figure out what works best for you and to be okay with that. Don't feel like you failed because you didn't, weren't able to do what other people are doing. It's no different than fitting into society's mold. We've got to figure out what works best for us. Chelsea says, but I'm not good at it. Translate for me, girl. What are you not good at? Because with me rambling on, sometimes those are delayed. So share that with me if you would, please. You know, staying focused is important, and it's very easy to just get yanked out of our, our, our focus by all kinds of distractions. Like I said, this morning I had it all planned out, and I was distracted by something else. Now, like I said, you've got to be able to also discern when there are divine breaks. Uh, Kelly the other day and, and Courtney were butchering roosters and they had a divine break of a friend stopping by and enjoyed a visit. That's a divine break. But when you are working on something and somebody comes to you, okay, just as an example, one of your children come to you, they don't want to do their schooling for the day, they're trying to get out of it, they want you to do it for them because they don't want to think and they're trying to interrupt you. And maybe this is that child that tends to do that a little more than the others. Or is that an extra needy child when it comes to homeschooling. So when you are aware of that, you can redirect them to stay focused so that they're not taking away from your focus. Something like that would not be a divine break necessarily. Now if your child came to you and you know they're usually really good at math and they're usually really good at being perseverant and trying things on their own and they come to you and they need your help, that's a divine break for you to encourage this student who's usually really good. So I hope those examples help to understand how we can discern a divine break from a distraction. And also Facebook and any social media you know, or a message popping up on your phone is not necessarily a divine break, unless it's somebody requesting prayer. <laughs> Otherwise, those things are not their distraction. So another suggestion, airplane mode on your phone is a great way to eliminate multitasking and distractions. Okay, let me see here. Chelsea says, oh lordy truth. It's about not getting flustered when you multitask and let your light show. Jesus was the ultimate, that darn Seymour button, it's gonna be the death of me. Facebook, you need to fix your Seymour button. All right, 
You'll see what I say later. It's all good. Okay, I will check it then. But thank you. All these comments are great. You know, we're not alone. We all struggle with varieties of different things. Some may struggle with different forms of stresses where others struggle from others. And being able to share that we're not alone and also share how we found ways to get through these things is really important. So share that too. Don't be afraid to share what works, what has worked for you. All right, so we appointed 12 disciples that he might send them out. That's Mark 3, 14. Okay, for all you folks with many children, especially those of you that are decluttering. It says, do not try to do it all yourself. How many of us try to do everything ourselves? We're the woman of the house, so we wanna be able to do the cooking and the cleaning and the um, laundry and the dishes and and work from home and homeschool and, and be a good wife and be a good mother and still try to take care of ourselves. Okay, that long list, are you gonna accomplish it all and be all that or are you gonna be under one heck of a burden of stress? Lots. We can't do it all and it's okay to delegate. It's okay to give things up. It does not make you weak. It does not make you lesser. It makes you smart. So keep that in mind. I feel like I have many children at work. <laughs> do, now Chelsea, Tammy has seven children. Are you another mother that has many children or, or no? And, and one of the funny things is out here where I live, there are lots of families with many children. And one of the women said, this was funny, when we got here, we were talking to the one lady in town at the county office. And um, there's lots of snow out here and different things during the winter months. And she says, do you know why us folks out here have many children? I said, because the winters are long. She looked at me very funny. That wasn't what she meant, but I thought it, it was, we ended up laughing over that. She said, no, because there's so many chores on a homestead that need to get done. So. Having lots of children is certainly a benefit, and if you're not utilizing them and teaching them good skills in learning how to do chores, you're missing out by trying to do it all yourself, and you're certainly going to be stressed. But that goes for us with smaller amounts of children, or no children at all. It's okay to delegate to your husband. He's, he is capable of helping, and you know what? Most men enjoy being able to help, but when they try to help, we don't allow them to. And that goes vice versa as well. Now, there's some good comments here. I try to do it all, I fail. I am better about asking for help now. Me too, sister, that was Tammy. And yes, me too, I didn't in the beginning. I have one boy, but I have adopted children as a nurse's aide. And you gotta learn to delegate, no matter what we've got and what we're working with. And the other thing is, is if you can't delegate because you don't have anybody to delegate to, this is what you do. Tomorrow's another day. We're not on this planet to kill ourselves. We are on this planet to be successful, to be productive, to be healthy, to be who we are, and to be able to do that in a safe way. Personal care is important, and if we are neglecting that to do all these other things, we are not gonna be good for ourselves or anybody. I've been there, I've done that. Let's not go there, let's not do that. Diana says, I was pretty good at delegating to my children when they were still at home. Yes, and now with an empty nest, you're missing that. I was too when the mountain boy left. He was a good errand runner for me. I'm grateful that he's back. But yes, we need to learn to delegate or we need to learn to realize that we are putting way too much on our to-do list for one person. Tammy says, I had to learn to accept different ways of things being done. I was so picky, I missed the blessing of having help. I was too for a while, yeah. You know, we're, it's, it's part of society and I think how we were brought up um, in some ways you know their way was the only way and um, I think this is where a blessing for me came in allowing my children to do things the way it felt comfortable for them and and trying to get the same end result for me um, because no matter what I did growing up it was never right Never, ever, ever, ever. And, and there was only one way to accomplish it. Where, as a broader thinker, there's always many ways to accomplish a task. So when, and this is a good point, Tammy, when we learn to look past that and understand that there 
uh, we're giving our children a freedom of being creative and learning to accomplish things that work their way. Sometimes, you know, they come up with better ways to do things. And that's important. And giving ourselves that break of, you know, not being the perfectionist. A perfectionist in my book is about as handy as a multitasker. Because we try to overdo things. And I'm speaking from experience and from being that person. In that, you know, being that picky person and wanting things perfect, we focus so much energy on one task and we could have moved on because in reality it was good a long time ago. So it's learning to detach from these things. It's learning to detach from our old thinking, um, our past that has affected us in the way we think, um, and being a little more creative and maybe understanding uh, and, and just de-stressing ourselves. <laughs> So on this note, it says, um, one of the reasons we get stressed out is because we think that everything depends on us, not Jesus. He enlisted, trained, and empowered 12 others so they could share the load. He delegated his work. He got other people involved. So why don't we do the same? Two reasons. Perfectionism. We think if I want a job well done, I have to do it myself. That's a nice idea, but often it doesn't work well because there are just too many things to be done. We simply don't have the time and the talent to do everything ourselves. It's really an egotistical attitude that says nobody but nobody can do it the way I can. And you know, we all, we all are there. Because, of course, but even knowing that, we still let them do the work. Why? Because we need to let other people make some of the mistakes in order for them to learn the same way, ways the disciples learn. Don't rob others of an education of being able to do things. And that's, it's really, it's really important. And you know what? With things, this is kind of funny. My husband makes such fun of me and it's, it's a riot. When he used to fold my jeans, he would fold them so that the back pockets were in. Well, the back pockets are what designate what jeans they are to me. So I'd have to go through and open them up and figure out. So I just nicely ask him if he could fold them the other way when he folds my jeans. So he makes a big to-do. He slaps my jeans and cracks them so he gets the wrinkles out. And then he says, pockets out! You know, like I'm Hitler. And so it's just, it adds humor and it adds fun. But... By asking for simple requests, we can get things the way they work best for us. They may not be perfect, but they're, they're more functional. So when we are doing things or having other people do them for us, there's not a reason why we can't ask for specifics. And in such cases, it makes humor and it enlightens things. And of course, that de-stresses when you're laughing. So Tammy, you're not alone. I, I went through that too. And in asking for help, you know, sometimes you get the argumentative, the kids sulking or the husbands or wives sulking, but you know what? They do really like to help. And once they see that they're helping you and that you can be happier, it all, it all comes full circle. Shelly says, I have a hard time letting others doing stuff. I am slightly OCD with some stuff. I think we all are to a certain degree. The mountain man is really funny and we laugh about that, you know? And that's just it. If you can find humor in your faults or in your, and I don't even want to say faults, in, in your interesting um, fashions of doing things, you know, we all have oddities. And you know what? I'm okay being weird. And I know you guys are too, especially when you get comfortable in your own skin. I'm okay with that. I'm not Hitler, but I like my pockets out. So funny. Anyway, Chelsea says me. I am a die-hard perfectionist in some ways, and it definitely causes stress. It certainly will. It certainly will. So when we get to a point where we can get past that and push past that and realize, you know, that it has been holding us back, our perfectionism and our inability to uh, delegate will hold us back. <laughs> quirks. I have lots of quirks. We all do. It's what makes us who we are. It's what makes us the way we are. It also is what makes us sing louder than others or dance in odder ways. And I'm okay with that. You got to be okay with that. I just, I, you know, our oddities 
make us who we are and it's what makes it's what makes the world go round it's what makes it fun learning how to find humor in our oddities learning how to find humor in our things that are keeping us from being better or being who we are supposed to grow into learning to find humor in that will help progress you to where you need to be let it go let it go have fun in letting it go you know how I had to let it go and it was very difficult I was flat on my back and I had to depend on everybody to do everything and that's where the humor came from the pockets and the pants yes so let it go all right um, there are okay so the perfectionism was the one thing insecurity was the other what if I turn this responsibility over to someone else and they do a better job than I do so what maybe if they do it better we can learn from them and perfect our own things right who cares who cares who cares if their way is better who cares if they found six other ways to do it and we only had one who cares maybe we might like one of their ways better wouldn't that be something who cares the possibility is threatening to many of us but we won't feel threatened if you know who you are who you are trying to please what you want to accomplish and the one thing you need to focus on and where you want to be where you want to go what if that um, perfectionism is holding you back from getting to your dream what if delegating that task to somebody else is keeping you from your finding your perfect thing in life wouldn't that be silly let it go let it go all right the next one prayer mark 135 very early in the morning Jesus prayed make prayer your daily habit prayer is the great stress reliever now how about this all those things you guys just shared with me that you're stuck on have you prayed about it have you asked God to take it away have you asked God to relieve that stress from you you can you can ask God for anything we just forget to do it Shelly says maybe they can continue to do it as a chore that is with your kids maybe you can continue to do it as a chore that is with your kids prayer is my absolute lifeline me too sister oh my goodness I pray all day long. I pray while I'm working. I pray while I'm walking. I pray while I'm doing dishes. I am in communion and conversation with God all the time. You know, part of what I said last week should have been dance like nobody's watching, sing like there's nobody listening, and talk to God and look kooky pretty often. I don't care. I talk to him out loud. I talk to him in my head. I don't care. You know why I don't care? Because he gives me peace. He gives me peace. He gives me comfort. He gives me direction. He guides me. He, he helps me along. He gets my heart in the right place. And when I'm praying, I'm usually praying for other people that come to mind. So I'm praying for my friends as they're going through struggles. I'm praying for my men as they're out in the heat. I'm praying for my boy to find his glasses. They're expensive. I pray for all those things. I pray for my dogs. I don't care. The chore statement as for insecurities and them doing stuff better. Absolutely. I figured there was, when I'm talking and they're delayed, sometimes it takes a while for my little P to reconnect on what you're saying and what I said. Because as soon as it's out of my mouth, often I'm forgetting what I'm saying. Especially live. It's hard. I've gotten much better with the comments and everything, but thank you, Shelly. So. Jesus began his day with prayer. He often stopped throughout the day to pray and he ended each day with prayer. We do that too. And having a prayerful companion is huge. That's why one of my prerequisites that I mentioned last week in my man was to have a man that enabled me to wear my faith on my sleeve. Because for my entire life, I had to keep my faith under that basket because people thought I was wacky or, or thought I was nuts or didn't agree and got very aggressive when I talked about my faith. I don't have to do that anymore I can be very prayerful I can talk to God I can talk to God with him even my boy it's such an awesome thing and being so in tune with God keeps you so in tune with your surroundings and enables you to discern and see things that maybe you wouldn't have seen if you didn't have such a close walk with Jesus we will talk more about that upcoming because that is a whole other subject but being in that relationship and communing and praying you know we can pray 
to God about anything. When I sit down and my to-do list is overwhelming, I pray because maybe in my little pee, I was thinking I had to do all this stuff and that my day was supposed to go that way when really he wanted something else completely of me that day. And even though I thought I was supposed to go out and go foraging and out in the wilds today, I might have other purpose here. So, you know, we can't lose, we can't lose face of what happens in our lives and we got to keep our focus where it needs to be. Okay, so I'm going to just read this. Time alone with God can be a decompression chamber for life's stresses. Amen. I know Diana is raising her hand, and most of you. When you are in communication with God, stress is gone and peace is replaced. We talk to God in prayer, tell Him what's on our minds, and let Him talk to us as we read the Bible. Then we look at our schedule, evaluate our priorities, and wait for instructions. If we live that way, the pharmaceutical industry would go broke because we wouldn't need to a fraction of the tranquilizers they market. Truth. <laughs> Truth. We allow our stresses to consume us so much that we get sick. We are unhealthy. We eat unhealthy. We eat because we're stressed. We, we are dependent on medications. All of that stuff. Be still and know that I am God. If we would just meditate on that. That's Psalms 46.10, by the way. And one reason we don't know God more personally is because we can't be still. We are stuck in abundance, stuck in clutter, stuck in stress, and unable to function. We need to find a balance. We need to get out of this mouse wheel, hamster wheel. Someone said it seems to be an ironic habit of man that when he loses his way, he doubles his speed. <laughs> yep, that wheel just keeps going faster. The story is told of a World War II Air Force pilot who flew over the Pacific. When he radioed the tower and the controller asked for his location, he replied, I don't know but I'm making record time. How many of you are right there? You don't know where you're going, but you're making record time. I used to, not anymore. My life is very direct, very intentional, and very focused. Even though it gets disheveled and things happen, I still hone it back in to an intentionally focused life and I keep my focus where it needs to be. It shouldn't be on me, it shouldn't be on my tasks, it's on God, and, and in doing so, my life is so much more peaceful. I can't tell you how. Okay, so, a lot of us are like that, speeding through life without knowing where we're headed. We need to start our morning with prayer just like Jesus did. Stop throughout the day and pray again, and recharge our spiritual batteries when we feel disheveled, when we are dysfunctional. Do it again. I love this one. I'm going to show you this then in a second. Uh, Diane says, I have to scoot. Have a great day. You too, sweet friend. Love you, girl. And good luck with your uh, decluttering there. I'm in the same boat right now. All right. This is what we need to do to overcome our stresses. Can you see her? I love her. I also have a picture of a woman the same age on a motorcycle with her hair blowing back in the wind. That is going to be me. I told you guys, I'm going to be climbing the mountains in my 80s out here, and I am determined to have fun. I love riding motorcycle, and there's no reason why I can't do that into my 80s also, unless I can't see or I need bottle cap glasses. But I'm going to do it. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Mark 6:31. Take time out to enjoy life. Jesus did that. We neglect to do that because we are so overtasked and we are so stressed that we forget to walk away from the to-do list and enjoy life. Part of that to-do list I told you guys way back when in the beginning of the year should have times penciled in to go do something for yourself. Shelley said, getting stuck in a good book. Taking 15 minutes to yourself. Go outside and watch the kittens running around. We have little kittens right now that are just hysterical. Doing all kinds of things. Whatever works for you, but take time for yourself. Jesus did that because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. And he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Jesus not only took time for relaxation and recreation, he told those who'd been working hard without relief, you deserve a break today. Let's get some rest, take time off. So they got into the boat, rowed to the, 
other side of the lake and went out into the desert. Jesus was able to handle stress because he knew when to relax. We don't know when to relax. We are so worried about perfectionism and holding on to everything that we do not take time for ourselves. Courtney says, I have to scoot and go finish cleaning the barn. Have a good day, sweet friend. Love you too. And, and good luck out there. Thank you for joining me. We're almost done here, guys. One, two more things. So we need to learn to find rest. Jesus was able to handle stress because he knew when to relax. Rest and recreation in life aren't optional. They're not unspiritual. Rest is so important that God included it in the Ten Commandments. The Sabbath was made, the Sabbath was made for mankind because God knows our physical, emotional, and spiritual constitu constitutions and demand regular periodic breaks. We are too foolish to put them into our lives. There is nothing wrong with having breaks. Jesus survived stress because he enjoyed life. J.B. Phillips, paraphrase puts it like this. The Son of Man came enjoying life, and Paul tells us that God is richly, has richly provided everything for our enjoyment. Balance is the key to stress management. Today you will feel burned out. Check two things if you are feeling burned out today. Are you drawing daily on God's grace, and are you depending on yourself or on Him? Do you regularly set aside time for rest and recreation? The word recreation means restore refresh or create a new are you getting the picture if you're burned out what use will you be to god's kingdom to your family and to yourself if we're not taking care of ourselves and not having fun guys we're we're, we're missing out on a huge part of that and that is what i have incorporated into my life that has made the biggest difference decluttering my home and taking self-care and time for myself whether that's working out foraging walking hiking reading drawing, whatever it is. Self-care also means doing treatments for myself. If I don't do that, I don't feel well. If I don't do that, I'm not taking care of myself. If I don't do that, I'm foolish. And I don't want to say that you're foolish too, but I want to encourage you to take time for yourselves. Walk away from that to-do list. Make sure that your to-do list has time scheduled in there for yourself. We are the masters of our time. And how are we mastering them? Usually not well. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. I will give you rest. If the load you're carrying is too heavy for you to bear, Jesus didn't give it to you. Others may have, or you may have taken it upon yourself, but Jesus had no part in it. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you, put it on your shoulders, and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest. This yoke is easy to bear, and this burden is light. The final stress management principle Jesus taught is to give us his, give our stress to him. You'll never enjoy complete peace of mind until you develop a relationship with the Prince of Peace. Notice Jesus didn't say, come to me and I'll give you more guilt, more burdens, more stress, and more worries, even though that's what a lot of religious people seem to teach. Some churches create pressure instead of relieving it. But Jesus said, I want to give you rest. I am the stress reliever. When you get in harmony with me, I'll give you inner strength. Only Jesus can transform your lifestyle from stressful to satisfied. The greatest source of stress comes from trying to live our lives apart from God who made us. Trying to go our own way and be our own God. What do you need? If you've never committed your life to Christ, you need a transformation. Give him your life with all its stresses and say, Lord, please give me a new life. Replace the pressure. I feel with the peace. I, I pressure I feel with the peace you offer. Help me to follow your principles of stress management. Develop a relationship with the Prince of Peace. Guys, I really can't express to you how much that's where it's at. But these are stages and steps, and I want you to write on that piece of paper the things that are holding you back, the things that are keeping you from reaching your dreams. The uh, a way you allow other people to dictate your life and your future. It's your life. It's your future. Pray about that. The things that weigh us down, we need to pray about. Hang on, old man. I think one of my guys needs to go out. Um, so remember that in our walk and in our daily dishevelment and in our stress and in our long to-do list and in all that we have responsibility to take care of, what you're struggling with can be prayed about. Don't 
just think that you need to go to God to ask for all the big things in life. I've asked for little things all the time, and sometimes the answers to those little prayers are the most precious because it shows that he loves me down to the finest hair on my head. Remember that and let go of the things that we are hanging on to that we think are going to make us super powered. They're not our superpower. God is our superpower. And when we let go of those things, such as perfectionism and the inability to, de uh, to delegate things, um, we find so much peace. Trust me, guys, you will find so much peace. And if you have to ask for pockets out, ask for pockets out. It's just silly stuff. Really, a lot of times, and I'm speaking again from my own experiences, that the things that I hung up on before were silly things. They were things that didn't matter. We need to learn to live life and enjoy life and, f and, and, and find our pieces and our, and our comfort in, in the simple things that really matter in life, not the things that we hold tight to that have no value and have no matter. And the biggest thing is being comfortable with who we are. We are sons and daughters of Christ, and he made us who we are for a reason. And our, our quirks, as Shelley put it, are our beauties. They are the things that make us who we are. And for those that are around you that love you for who you are, will find pleasure in your quirks and your idiosyncrasies and your silliness. That's the way it's supposed to be. And, and sometimes in life, if we are not surrounded by people that love those things, we might be being surrounded by the wrong people. It's all part of the process of figuring out who we are and what we want in life and focusing on that and driving for it, as it said in one of these, to have that fire put back into us, to be striving for the right things. So as you go through your disheveled and stressful day, and I know many of you are working on some pretty tough stuff and going through some pretty tough things, um, one step at a time, one task at a time till it's finished, and keep going. And in the midst of those tasks, make time for yourself. And enjoy life, enjoy a cup of tea, enjoy a conversation with a friend, enjoy a divine break. But let these things sink in today. We all struggle with stresses. We all struggle with things we don't let go. We all struggle with things um, of just not knowing who we are. And, and it is all a process. Like I said, I'm, I'm 49. There are things I've just recently learned. There are things that I've learned in my early 40s. There's things I've learned in my 30s. But I'm sharing those things with you so that wherever you are in life, if you haven't figured them out and gotten to better places in life, there are ways to do it and it can be accomplished. So I'm going to pray for you guys and I'm going to pray for, I'm just going to pray for us all. We've got an amazing community and uh, it just made me think of something when I said community. I would love to have you guys join us in our community over on Patreon. We are really going to focus on building that and you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash community and realize that when you um, join us there, that you are really helping support us to do what we do. Also, if you haven't, join our newsletter. You can do so by going to treyerwilderness.com slash newsletter. I sent a newsletter out this week um, of what we've been up to. If you have not subscribed and you do so after the fact, I will be resending that newsletter out in the next couple days. So you'll get a copy of that in your inbox. There's lots of tips and tricks in the newsletter and I'm going to try to stay up with that. It's been quite a few months while we've been redoing this. So, but you can subscribe to that. That's how I keep in touch with our audience. For those of you that like foraging and like getting involved in herbal um, and medicinal medicines, all of that I'm mentioning is down below in the description. You can take part in the free Herbal Preparation 101 mini course by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Herbal Preparation 101. It is a free course being put on by um, the Herbal Academy. They are fabulous. I have taken quite a few of their courses and I am in training to uh, become a uh, much greater uh, and much more knowledgeable in my herbal medicines. Um, I just feel like that's where God is leading me. 
Also, if you like chicken wings, there is an opportunity for Wings for Life with Butcher Box. It is uh, an outfit that provides meats for your family. We have tried them. Uh, they were really good. And you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash butcherbox. And one other one that I wanted to mention to you today, whoop, that's not where I want to be, is the Master Gardening class, which I also shared on our Facebook page. And you can find that by going to uh, treyerwilderness.com slash harvest, harvest masterclass. And um, that is a uh, preserving the harvest masterclass over at Self Reliance School. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Guys, when there are opportunities to sign up for these free classes, do so. You will not be sorry. The, Organizations I share are organizations that are tried and true. I feel very confident in sharing them. They are people that are very like-minded and the things they offer have great value to me or I wouldn't be sharing them. I will not share things with you that I have not reviewed or tried and um, many of these people are dear friends doing the same thing that we are, educating, inspiring, and encouraging you guys to embrace your dreams and also to learn as much as you can because knowledge is power. So with that being said, and I appreciate you guys so much. This is so much fun. This is such a highlight to my week. I give God the glory for sharing what, we, what I share here. Um, he feeds me and um, you guys, your comments and your feedback, you inspire and then help others in the process because it helps people to realize we're not alone and we're all on the same path trying to improve and if we can help one another along the way, that's what it's all about and I love our community. We are fabulous. You guys are fabulous. This is not about me. This is about all of us. So, Papa, I just thank you for another amazing Facebook Live here for fabulous people coming out and just sharing and for those that are watching the replay and Papa I just ask that you be with everyone help them through the, the process of finding themselves and being okay with who they are because that's the first step once we are confident with who we are and who you've made us to be the rest just sort of falls into place behind there and as Chelsea said it's a heart issue and as Shelley said we all have quirks but you have created us each and individually with a plan and you've made us in your image and the plan you have for us is big and bold and fabulous until we work past our insecurities we aren't going to get to that place so help each and every one of these people watching Give them the strength and the courage and the abilities to pull into you if they don't know you Allow them to have the courage to come to me and ask for more knowledge and, and to help them on that journey. Or just send the right person to them if it's not me. And Lord, just strengthen us all in our walk. May we lean on you more. May our hearts be guided by the Holy Spirit. And may we learn as you nudge us on this path called life. And just thank you for all that you do in each of our lives. Remind us daily to focus on the blessings and be thankful for all that you do for us. That is a huge step in learning to be who we are, is seeing the gifts you constantly are giving us. And just thank you more than anything for what you're going to do because what you're going to do is big and bold and courageous and amazing. And I thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives. And I ask you to just keep your hedge of protection over everyone and keep everyone safe until we meet again. I love you and I ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. I love you all too. I thank you for taking time out of your day. I know that these get long, but I, I feel really hopeful that we're all learning together from this. And I look really forward to seeing you guys again next Wednesday. Same time, 1030 Pacific Standard Time. Love you all. Good luck in what you're doing and good luck in your um, journey to find yourself and find the balance in your life that provides you with great peace and joy. Love you all. Have a great day and see you next week. God bless you.